Today, guys, here at uh, Bo's All Natural Brewing Company with Jen and Steve. So, some questions. First, um, when did Bo's open? Uh, first batch of beer went out July 1st, 2006. Alrighty. Uh, how many employees do you have right now? Just hit 65. Which is kind of awesome because we Time started... to retire. <laughs> no. <laughs> we, when we started off, there was just five of us. And that was six years ago, so... Uh, the amount of change in a very short time has, has been kind of kind of bizarre. Now we usually go into a, a lot more detail on the brewery itself, but uh, truthfully, what I want to talk to you about, you're all natural, so your greener initiatives. Because I did see the some of the solar stuff out there and all that, and I we've talked a little bit about your greener future project yeah. and all that. So uh, yeah, first let's talk about that. What's your environmental initiatives here? Uh, I, I guess the, the first thing I like to always point out is that to me sustainability is more than just carbon footprint. Uh, we've got a, a goal of being a truly sustainable brewery which means we want to be uh, a neutral impact or a beneficial impact on, on the environment around us uh, and that includes not just not just the you know the, the physical environment but also the community we live in uh, so we've got very aggressive donation targets very aggressive giving targets to uh, a number of, of community initiatives and worthwhile causes uh, but specifically towards um, you know the physical environment um, you know being certified organic was obviously a, an obvious and, and first step um, uh, things that probably most people don't ever notice are things like the the <laughs> labels being you know completely uh, the original version was completely tree free uh, they were made out of a cotton fiber uh, we had to switch to a hundred percent recycled version um, the box that the beer comes in is a hundred percent recycled 75 percent of which is uh, post consumer um, which is the highest threshold that that is available um, if we could find a hundred percent we'd do it <laughs> um, and we were able to get it for the labels so. and yeah for the labels we can do a hundred percent post consumer but the the box is 75 percent um, the whole design of our four pack was was based around minimizing uh, waste for for the beer so in that little four pack you get 17% more beer than a regular six pack with dramatically less packaging waste there's less glass there's less you know caps the using pry off instead of twist off uh, allows the bottle to be reused uh, dramatically more often because it's always the threading that that goes first on a on a bottle um, all of the the marketing materials the posters we do they're all post post consumer 100% um, and the design around the brewery was intended to make post consumer stuff look good by using that you know sort of earlier era imagery and and simple simple color schemes um, you don't need high gloss paper you don't need four color prints and, and when you need high gloss and four color prints you have to use virgin paper so before we started designing for the brewery uh, we took a look at you know, what was best for for the impact on the environment um, we are trying to solar panel the entire brewery with our greener futures program uh, we were the first company in eastern Ontario not the first brewery but the first company to uh, have an energy assessment done by the uh, Guelph Food Technology uh, Sustainability Division um, and uh, it's just something we we don't take for granted is the you know the world that we live in and the fact that beer requires clean water and quality malts and quality hops um, it's one of these funny things where you can say that we're doing this for completely altruistic reasons but in reality I think it's you know it's an understanding that if 300 years from now we want to make good beer we need clean water <laughs> to be able to do that so it's I think we're just taking a long view of, of the world that we live in more than more than anything else all right now um, not even everybody that 
drinks beer would have heard of you by now, but a lot of people that don't drink beer have due to your home delivery system. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything to say about that? Oh, I've got a lot to say about that. Um, <laughs> uh, this is, again, it's, it's one of the things that, you know, for us, sustainability means uh, a sustainable community. Um, and uh, so we do a lot of work with, with a number of charities, but uh, there's one charity in particular we've done a lot of work with, and that's uh, Operation Come Home. It's an Ottawa-based uh, homeless youth uh, business, so they their goal is to prevent homeless youth from becoming homeless adults, and they do a lot of very innovative programming, um, and that allows them, and they've got a very creative uh, sort of background behind them, um, and they've really sort of embraced, I guess, what would be called social entrepreneurship. And so they'd originally approached us, I guess, maybe about four or five years ago, and they wanted to start a uh, empty bottle return program. And they wanted to know, could they, if they collected bottles, would we take them back at the regular deposit? And we said, no, uh, we'll give you $2 a bottle instead of, you know, the, the 20 cent deposit that was on the bottles. Those are for the ceramic ones that, you know, for us, we would be paying two dollars for them if they were new. So getting them back for two dollars was was great. <laughs> and uh, so we started. We had a great relationship that started there, and then uh, they called us up and said, "We're trying to find a way to expand this program. What would you think about a program where instead of people having to drop off the bottles at at a, a depot?" that we started a, a pickup service where we go house to house and I said well if you're serious about that that's what you want to do wouldn't it make a lot more sense if you delivered beer when you picked up the empties because there's a lot more money in delivering <laughs> beer than picking up empties and so we had this really cool idea it took us months and months and months to develop the the protocols around it because uh, it is homeless youth that are employed by the service and a lot of homeless youth have a lot of addiction issues so we had to make sure that you know they were supervised 100% of the time by social workers that um, and other bottle delivery services don't do this but we made sure every single one of them got their smart serve papers um, that they you know had the you know the most promise to to get back on their feet and very rigorous program and then you know and the amount of paperwork to make sure that all of this was in place every time we spent months and months and months doing it and we launched it and the day that it launched it got shut down <laughs> <laughs> because someone and we were told it was another brewery complained because they found this this antiquated loophole that says the the dial a bottle services the beer delivery services had to purchase they don't say from the lcbo they say from uh, an authorized and operated uh, government retail store so we're not lawyers <laughs> uh, we can't afford lawyers uh, we are a government authorized say, retail a store government authorized retail store and someone found the loophole and every other version for for how we exist for special occasion permits and for this and that it always says it has to be from a government authorized retail store they found out that because it had the word operated next to authorized that that means something different so that means that the employees have to be from the government too we missed it they caught it and out of some form of maliciousness decided to complain and within a day of starting up we got shut down they dialed six numbers and waited <laughs> <laughs> exactly the rat line <laughs> exactly so there is something strange about that story though because the beer store is government operated mm -hmm. exactly and that's yeah. that's one of that's the funny the things is in the in the legislation that that kind of got skipped and then in I think in one version of it 
They actually said either the beer store or a government authorized and operated store. And to me that when I read that, it meant even more so that that must mean that we're okay to do this. If the beer store can do it, which is owned by a couple breweries, there, there can't be a reason why our brewery can't do the same. Um, turns out I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so it got shut down. And in retrospect, that's probably the best thing that could have ever happened. Yeah, it was all over the internet, all over TV. It was... I I was in Victoria a couple months ago for a beer festival and every third person coming to the booth in BC was coming up and asking about what happened with the, the bottle return pro or the, the bottle delivery service. Um, it took a total of eight days. Um, there was after three days, uh, Premier McGinty was getting questions in, in the House of Commons and within eight days they'd literally changed the laws in Ontario to allow the service to, to get back up and running and we got the news Friday at 4 p.m. we were actually in the middle of a staff <laughs> meeting, meeting. <laughs> and the whole and so like the whole brewery's here and we had this this moment where um, Steve was talking he was sort of you know talking to the entire staff and then he looked down at his cell phone and said I've got to take this one <laughs> I right. walk away and it was it's uh, it was our MPP on the phone saying guess what we we got the law changed you're back up and running and so I walked back out and I'm like hey everybody this just happened and the everybody in the <laughs> the whole brewery just just erupted in cheers and it was one of these like really special moments and uh, by the following Monday the service was back up and running and um, it's one of these things uh, it's not for us it's not a huge revenue stream. Uh, don't get me wrong. It's it's a. I'm not complaining. It's it, it's another <laughs> revenue stream for the brewery, um, and it's also for a lot of our customers who live in Ottawa that don't have access to a vehicle or don't have time to drive an hour here and an hour back. They actually get access to a beer, and that's a big issue for me. Is you know making sure that people that want our beer can actually get it. Um, but then on top of that, and to me the the really special part about this is. Um, the success stories with, with the youth that have been involved. We've got uh, one guy that was hired by the service um, that has taken the experience there, developed a resume, got a place to live, and is now working full-time for another delivery service. Another guy um, has saved up enough money, uh, got himself a place, and enrolled himself back in university and was able to get enough uh, OSAP to, to be able to sustain himself to get to get an education um another guy literally had he lost his uh his id and when you're homeless you can't get id so being able to get a job to pay for a place allowed him to get id which is going to allow him to have a life again you know and uh, We've only been running this for less than a year now, and these are three people's lives that are dramatically changed by it. And uh, you know, it's uh, it's one of these funny things where we get all the benefit of extra sales and access for our customers and all this, but there's no downside whatsoever for us. Um, it's all win, and at the same time, all these all these people are getting you know better opportunities, better, better lives out of it. And it's, to me, that's, that's our marketing philosophy to a T. Find a way to be either more sustainable or help the community while selling more beer. And it's just, it's the perfect win. I could keep talking about that for forever. <laughs> well, it, it's great to hear. I was excited too when the news came out that you guys won that as well. Um, we, we were spreading it all over the internet as well. So That's awesome. We were following it from the moment it happened. Like, right up to it opened, it shut down. <laughs> That's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Well, when it's it's funny. that We do, like, last year we, we donated over $150,000 to charities. And you never know which one's going to be the thing that people really hold on to and the beautiful thing about it is different people hold on especially to, to different things you know if you've lost a loved one to cancer when you see us out raising money for cancer research it means a lot to you but 
sometimes you just hit on something that just everybody connects to in just a, a such a visceral way and this one we were at at an operation come home meeting just before the thing launched it's going over the you know crossing the t's and dotting the i's and uh on the way out the the operation come home vehicle that would be transporting the beer was outside Jen took her phone took a picture posted it on facebook by the time we'd gotten back to the brewery <laughs> We, there was interview requests from, I think, seven different media organizations, including, like, CTV, CBC, and it was a picture on Facebook, <laughs> and uh, and that was before things got shut down. That was, this is, hey, this is going to happen. There was no marketing, yeah, advertising, would anything. Would you like this van to deliver beer to your home in Ottawa? And that just started things off in just such a huge way. And, at that point, we knew we had something cool on our hands, but it, when it got shut down and then blew up in such a huge way, it was beyond what we would have expected. Alrighty, um, so what's your distribution ratio other than, other than the project? Uh, so we deliver, we deliver to about 700 restaurants now in Ontario. Uh, currently, we go about as far west as Kitchener Waterloo, but there's a lot of areas that we just can't get to even even up to that. Uh, and then there's about 350 LCBO stores that we service as well. Uh, we just finished the the new brew house installation that, that you got to see, and uh, with that, we're hoping to broaden it to at least across Ontario, uh, which uh, we're really excited about because. There's a we get a lot of people that are looking for our beer, in in lots of places that we just haven't been able to make enough beer for. As you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you feel the OCB has changed the Ontario beer market? It's done a lot. Um, what I think the OCB is best at is um, is having a collective voice to talk to government too, when when there are issues. Um, they the marketing support i think when you're a really small brewery is is vitally important um and i think what's even more important is the the camaraderie that that develops between the different members of the ocb and i really think you can't understate the the importance of that the relationships that we've developed with so many of the ontario breweries have come about through you know being co-chair of the uh, Ontario Craft Beer Week and going to the marketing meetings, being part of the executive committee. It's it's one of the one of the things where, um, and there are people and there are breweries that that you know do have complaints about the OCB. I really find the more you put into it, the more you get out, and uh, for a big part of it what you get out is not something that you can attach a dollar value to uh, but for example uh, for our Oktoberfest last weekend um, uh, Mill Street lent us a uh, hundred kegs Church Key lent us a bunch of kegs um, I would have never met those th I'm sure I'd, eventually I would have met them but the relationships I developed with both those companies came from my involvement and their involvement with the with the OCB. Uh, when we first got off the ground, we ended up um, brewing uh, at Church Key for for about eight months because we couldn't afford to have our own system here. And you know, I met John Graham at, at an OCB meeting at at his brewery. And you can't you can't put a value on that. That's you know just when you work together for common goals you you develop a you know a bond and it, when it's everyone ag yeah, against everyone or everyone for themselves you don't get that you need an organization like the Ontario Craft Brewers to to really galvanize that that camaraderie between the breweries I think. Alrighty uh, next question is two part so over the last few years you've seen us well you've seen the Ontario beer market jump from 20, 25 breweries to what we have now, which is probably closer to this 50, 60 range. It's yeah. 75 the other 75? day. 75? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what are your feelings about contract breweries? Because one, that's a big part of mm -hmm. 
the new number we're at now, and two, what do you think has changed in the market that has let us explode to where we're at now? So contract breweries, I I think it's a great way for someone that's got a great idea but not a lot of money to get into into brewing. Um, I I firmly believe that for every new brewery in Ontario and every new brewery in Canada and every new brewery in the U.S., whether they have a physical location or just a wonderful recipe and a lot of passion, it's building momentum. It's bringing more access to customers. And for the folks that do have, you know, bricks and mortar breweries that aren't at full capacity, it it can be the thing that keeps them afloat. And I think a lot of people talk poorly of contract breweries without realizing that a lot of physical breweries would not exist if they didn't have the opportunity to do some contract brewing. Um, at the same time, uh, you know, if Ontario only had 20 breweries, we would not be nearly as exciting as if we have 75. Yeah. Um, I, and I, there's some wonderful examples, mo- mostly in the U.S. Samuel Adams, the Boston Beer Company, was I think something like ninety percent or ninety five percent contract brewery till like two years ago. Um, this was a brewery that, in everybody's mind, had a geographic footprint and a place in the world, and you know they're the largest, if you can call them a craft brewery, still craft brewery. And if you can't call them a craft brewery, they're still cool as I'm gonna say cool as shit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, they're doing good things and whether or not sort of they've reached that threshold where you, you know, you can't feel good about calling them craft anymore. That's, that's a, you know, a whole other debate, but it shows that you don't physically need to have bricks and mortars and stainless steel to be an honest to God brewery. Um, we went the route where you know we wanted total control out of what we were producing uh we did at one point try doing a bit of contracting with another brewery it's too difficult for us mainly because we just want that much control over everything um but for a lot of breweries um it's it's a great thing to do um i think it's one of those things where transparency is, is the biggest issue. So yeah. if you're going to pretend that you've got a real brew and you're going to put a picture of a brew house on your box, you, that better be the brew house you're making beer on. Um, I, you know, I, I think the whole world has gotten jaded uh, because there's a lot of people that lie about what they're doing. Not just not the brewing industry, the, across the board. And, you know, my belief is that if you tell people the truth, there's no reason not to do it. If you're going to lie and say that, you know, no, no, we've really got a brewery. You just can't come visit. <laughs> to me, that's not cool. Ignore the man behind the curtain. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, so that's the, the first, the first part of the question. I, I ramble by the way. <laughs> All right. I'll try to wrap this the second part in three minutes. See, see how this goes. Um, what's changed, I think, in the uh, in the beer market, is is the the notion of critical mass. Um, for the longest time, I, for ourselves, you know, we felt like you know the one gem in eastern Ontario, the the one brewery that that was doing things right. There's now in the last two years, nine breweries have opened up. Um, in Toronto, it seems like there's a new brewery opening up every week. In every neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. A, a brewery is literally launching tomorrow. And, you know, Bellwoods has only been open for two months. and I couldn't get in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I was broken hearted. Yeah. Uh, the amount of new, new beer. What's happened is, you know, there's one or two people doing interesting things. And then a couple more, and then a couple more, and, and the growth was slow, but it was there. And I think for for a lot of the consumer's point of view, very very legitimately so, things weren't changing fast enough. Uh, but it takes a lot of time to you know uh, 
get the financing in place, get the the approvals from the government, all the sort of things that need to happen before you can do anything. And then most breweries start off really small, so you can't do a whole lot of beer. As you grow, you get to expand that. And I think what we've hit in the province is just this critical mass where as collectively we've been making more beer and more creative styles, more people are getting interested and more people are getting excited about the rate of growth. And the more they get excited, the more new breweries start popping up. And we're now, I think, in this just absolute mushroom explosion of uh, beer and people. Is that the end of the... No, no I'm, oh, that was... <laughs> I'm going to get a phone call around two. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, you get this, this great kind of circular thing feeding where the more breweries there are out there, the more people get excited about the beer that's out there, the more people get excited, the more restaurants recognize that this is a big thing, the more the LCBO gets gets to recognize it's a big thing and then it spins right around and that gets more people and then those people get more restaurants and then those restaurants spawn more breweries and those breweries get more people and uh, we finally hit that point where things are changing dramatically quick now and uh, on a very small scale we saw that in Ottawa yeah. um, when we first first got our, our first restaurant on Elgin Street you know it was, it was a tough sell but once we got that first one, it was easier to get the second. Once we had three restaurants on Elgin Street, every single restaurant on Elgin Street was calling us up, it seemed like. And it just, it required that critical mass of people going to those three restaurants, having a beer they really liked, and then going to the other restaurants that they sometimes go to and saying, how come you don't have that really good beer? It's made locally. And collectively, as a province, we've done that. And that's We've demanded cool. it. Yeah. And we've created it at the same time. Yeah.